Okay, now the final part of inequalities is applications of inequalities. So we're going to do some application questions and some problem solving questions regarding inequalities. So you've got to be very, very considerate with this part because these are the type of questions you might get in your school exam very, very likely. So let's get started. Follow through very carefully. Starting with 54. If a certain integer x is increased by 3, the result is greater than 7 but less than 13. Find the possible values for the integer. I want you to interpret that information as in, in terms of algebra. So I want you to write an um, inequality with some pronumerals. So I'll call the certain number b x. It's increased by 3, so I add 3, and that's going to be greater than 7, so greater than 7, but less than 13. That's the inequality. Now I just need to solve it. So I have plus 3, so subtract 3 onto both sides, so you get 4 and 10. So all the possible values we can have is 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, which are between those two. And make sure you can't have 4 and 10 because it's not including them. So it's just those numbers. 55, if a certain number is halved, then decreased by 1, the result would lie between 3 and 9. Between what possible values could the number lie? So the number is half, so x divided by 2, and then we decrease it by 1, so we subtract 1, and that answer is between 3 and 9. That's the inequality. So I'm going to get rid of the 1 first by adding 1 onto both sides, so it becomes 4 and 10. And then I multiply by 2 because we're dividing by 2 there, so it becomes 8 and 20. That's the answer guys, x is between 8 and 20 is the answer because they say between what possible values could the number lie. 56. The sum of three consecutive integers is greater than 6 but no more than 15. What could the integers be? Now guys, what are consecutive numbers? Consecutive numbers are numbers that are one after the other. So like 3 and 4 or 6 and 7. 8, 9, and 10. These numbers are right next to each other. So they're called consecutive numbers or consecutive integers. It says the sum of three consecutive integers. So I'm going to make the consecutive integers be x. The next number would be x plus 1. And then the next number would be x plus 2 because we add 1 to get the next number. So it says the sum. So the sum would be the addition of all of these. So if I add them all up, if I add x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2, it's going to be greater than 6, but no more than 15. So it can be 15, but it can't be anything greater. So that's why I have the bar there. Okay, so that's the important thing. Some people, most people will tend to forget the bar. Make sure it's less than or equal to 15. So x plus x plus x is 3x, 1 plus 2 is 3. Subtract 3 onto both sides, so I have 3 and 12. And then simply divide by 3. And we have 1 and 4. So that's the answer. But it says, what could the integers be? So what kind of integers could lie between 1 and 4? It's going to be 2, 3, and 4. It can't be 1, but it can be 4. So that's the answer. Therefore, the three consecutive integers are 2, 3, 4. Or, if the, if so if that, that's when x is 2. Now, if x is 3, the next number would be 4 and 5. And if x is 4, it could be 5 and 6. So you have to have three sets of integers. So 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, or 4, 5, 6. Okay, because we have different values of x. 57. Okay, we've got a rectangle here. A rectangle is to be constructed with lengths x centimeters and widths x minus 4 centimeters. So that's x, that's x minus 4. The perimeter of the rectangle is to be less than 40 centimetres. Find the possible values of x. The perimeter is the outside lengths added together. So we'll have 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. And that must be less than 40 centimetres. Now let's just solve that. Expand out your brackets. So we have 2x plus 2x minus 8 is less than 40. And then 2x plus 2x is 4x. Move your 8 over to the other side to make 48. And then divide by 4. So x is less than 12. But the reason I'm not going to stop there is I want you, with these kind of questions, you must understand the context of the question. x is less than 12. But you must remember that x minus 4 is 
is greater than zero. X minus four should be greater than zero because it's a side. A length of a side must be greater than zero. Now the reason why I didn't say x is greater than zero is because this is the shorter side. The shorter side must be less than the longer side. So the shorter side must be greater than zero. That's why I use the shorter side. So here you can see that x is greater than four if you move the four over to the other side, right? X is greater than four and x is less than 12. So therefore the answer from one and two, I just labeled them one and two, so don't get confused with this. The answer is between four and 12. Now 58, two sides of a given triangle are six and 10 centimeters. Find the range of possible lengths of the third side out of the triangle. Two sides of the given triangle, so we have six centimeters and 10 centimeters. If you have six centimeters and 10 centimeters sides, what can the third side be? That's what the question is asking. What I'm saying is some, so that's sum, okay, not sum. Sum of any two sides of a triangle should be greater than the other side. Say for example, that's one side of a triangle and that's the other side. The third side, the third side, that one, must be smaller than this, these two sides added together. Say for example, this is six and this is 10. The sides can be expanded further. So if I make them a little bit more apart, like that, that's six and 10. I can still make a triangle. But what if the six and 10 make a straight line? If it's six here and 10 here, I can't make a triangle because it's flat. If the third side is a little bit less than the sum of six and 10, we can always make a triangle. It must be less than. So the sum of these two sides must be always greater than the other sides. That's the rule. Let's say six and 10 is one side, is one of the sides. So six is one side, 10 is one side, and we'll let the other side be X, so X centimeters. So if these are the sides of a triangle, I can say that six plus 10 must be greater than X because the sum of them must be greater than the other side, or six plus X, must be greater than 10 because the sum of these two must be greater than the other side, or x plus 10 must be greater than six. Does that make sense? That's all I have, I'm applying this one for different combinations of these three sides. Now let's solve it. Here, six plus 10 is 16. So that's my first equation, I'm just gonna label it one. Here I'm just putting on a number line just to show you graphically. So if x is less than 16, that's 16, it must be anything that's less than, not including. Here, move the six over, it should become four. So X is greater than four. So that's four, this is where it's greater, not including. Here, move the 10 over, so you have negative four. Six minus 10 is negative four. So negative four is over here, it must be anything that's greater. So now we just have to find the common part the part that holds common for all of these three inequalities. Now, I think the common part is from here to here, this part here. That's where it's common, isn't it? That's where all of the three are common. So therefore the answer is X is between four and 16. So greater than four, less than 16. Does that make sense, guys? I know it's gonna be tricky for some of you to think of this. If you like, guys, draw diagrams and think of it that way. As I said, if that's six and that's 10, if it's perfectly straight, it can't be that. The sum of these are 16. So the third side, they must be slightly bent inwards to make the other third side, right? Otherwise it can't be a triangle. The third side must be a little bit less than 16, or must be less than 16 to make a triangle. That's why that top part is 16. Now what happens if they, think of it this way guys, what happens if six and 10 are so close together? So if I have six here and 10 here, the third side can be made, right? But what happens if they're really close together? If that's six and that's 10, even if they make slight, very, very small angle, they can still make a triangle by joining up these two. My diagram's a bit weird, but does that make sense? But think of it this way. 
What if that six and ten is stuck together? What if it's stuck together? If it's stuck together, we can't make a triangle. So the other side must be greater than the difference. So 10 minus 6 is 4. So the other side must be greater than 4 in order for the triangle to be made. That's why the lower boundary is 4. Okay, so if you really don't understand all this stuff, you can do it diagrammatically. That's perfectly fine as well, as long as you can get that answer. Okay, so that was a tricky one. That's probably what you'd get in your last question of your exam. Okay, so we've just completed inequalities. Well done, guys.